Hi everybody, welcome to a quick shot on the Martinis uh, with Scott channel. A quick shot is where I try to, in five minutes, it takes longer, five to ten minutes, I try to give you uh, some insight into a technical topic in finance, in banking, in leadership, in running a business, in entrepreneurship, whatever the technical topic is. Um, try to do that quickly, give you some insight. Today we're going to talk about EBITDA evaluations. Uh, last quick shot, we talked about the definition of EBITDA, how to calculate it, why it's important. One of the reasons it's important is it is a basis, often a methodology for valuing your business. And I'm going to walk you through the basics of that today. Look, I don't want you to turn yourself into a business valuator. You need to be careful with this, with this stuff because to do business valuations is complicated. There's a lot of math behind it. There's a lot of science, but there's also a lot of art. And so if you don't have the experience, you're not going to get it right but it's really important for you to understand the basics of how evaluation works because it may impact how you negotiate if you're trying to buy a business if you're trying to sell a business it may impact how you design your kpis your key performance indicators from a financial perspective and so it's just great knowledge to have okay it all and in my experience is gonna if you understand just this on the whiteboard you're going to be ahead of 95 percent of the business world Okay, EBITDA evaluations. EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. I've given you a um, some forecasts here and actual numbers for your hypothetical business. Year, uh, year zero, you know, means today. We've just completed the year end. Uh, we know for a fact these numbers are actual. Our EBITDA from our uh, financial statements is $1 million. We have projections into the future of 1.2 of EBITDA, 1.5 of EBITDA, and 1.7 of EBITDA. So there's some growth that we're projecting out. By the way, take away zeros, call this 100,000, add zeros, call it 100 million. It doesn't change the math on this, okay? That's why I've done it simply like that. Um, we talked in the last quick shot on EBITDA about normalization. And, and so I'm gonna give you an example of a couple of normalizing entries to EBITDA here. We've got the owner's uh, bonus. So you, you were selling me your business that just did a million dollars of EBITDA, but not only did it do a million dollars of EBITDA, it paid you half a million dollars in a bonus during that year, which is an expense, which means if it hadn't paid you that bonus, your EBITDA would have been 1.5 million. When I buy the business, I'm not paying that bonus. So that's a fair normalizing entry I can add back $500,000 that you were lucky enough to take out in year zero and also in my projection period, okay? The other thing is that you, in your business, because you're smart, you own your own real estate and you're not paying rent, but when you sell me your business, you're not gonna sell me your real estate. I'm in fact gonna have to pay you a rent, a lease to operate within that premise. So that's a deduction because the business now would be paying uh, a lease that it otherwise isn't paying. So you, we're gonna call that lease $300,000 a year. So we're taking out 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 in each of these periods. And we end up with a normalized EBITDA of 1.2 uh, actual, projected 1.4, projected 1.7, projected 1.9. Now, I've also looked at what happened last year and what happened two years ago. And what I find is that two years ago, my normalized EBITDA, we're gonna assume in your business was 1.4 million. And then last year it was 1.3 million. And of course we had to 1.2 uh, this year. Uh, and these are all actual numbers, not projected. Have you noticed that the actual numbers are actually declining 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, whereas the projected numbers are, are growing 1.2, 1.4, 1.7, 1.9. That's a risk factor in valuation. It's a risk factor in business. How are you going to convince somebody uh, in an M&A transaction if you're trying to sell, or even your banker? How are you going to convince them that this trend is not the real trend, but that trend is the real trend? Okay, valuation. So the first thing you want to do is you can't use every one of these numbers. You have to take, you have to figure out, estimate what is called a maintainable EBITDA. In other words, this business, your business, will do this amount of EBITDA pretty much forever into the future. It's a maintainable number, okay? So what would that be? This is a judgment on the valuator's part. Um, I have said here a low of 1.2 and let's put in a high of 1.4 because you have some pretty good reasons why uh, year minus one and year zero were sort of a step back from the 1.4, but the 1.4 you feel is kind of reasonable 
and you've convinced me of that or the valuator of that. And so I've picked my high and low. You don't have to pick a high and a low, uh, but if you were to if you were to engage a business valuator, you would probably get a report that had a range in it as opposed to a specific number. You then apply a multiple to that. And I've chosen a multiple of five, I've chosen a multiple of four, and obviously there's some interplay here between what you choose as your maintainable EBITDA. So for example, if I put 1.8 here, I better put a pretty low multiple on that because it's a much riskier, uh, it's a much riskier number. Um, what goes into a multiple is uh, risk. Um, uh, so what is the risk of, ma uh, of hitting that maintainable? It's comparable transactions. The whole point of doing an EBITDA evaluation is you can look at other businesses and how they trade and you can back into an EBITDA multiple to give you some insight into that. But the most important thing, the most exponential thing uh, uh, I guess it's geometric, not exponential, but the, the most sensitive thing in a multiple is your growth. The higher growth you have, uh, the more your multiple is going to go because you're not accounting for the growth in your EBITDA number because your EBITDA is one number. It's a maintainable number. So you account for growth in the multiple. 1.2 times 5 is 6 million. 1.4 times 4 is 5.6 million. What am I valuing? Is that the value of the shares? No. It's the value of your operating assets. How do I know that? Because I'm using an EBITDA number and EBITDA is before interest. Interest is the cost of your debt. So you haven't, I haven't accounted for that yet. I have not accounted for the cost of my debt. So now in an EBITDA valuation, here's what most lay people, uh, business people who are not valuators forget, is you have to deduct your interest bearing debt. What interest bearing debt? all of your interest bearing debt. There's some nuance on that, but it's beyond the scope of this. I've assumed that you have in your business $3 million of debt. So the value of the operating assets would be 6 million to 5.6 million or vice versa. Take off the debt of 3 million and you end up with the value of your, of your operating assets less your debt being in the range of 2.6 to $3 million. Is that the value of your business? No, you value your business is more than that because you remember this remember this lease issue? You have the real estate that I'm not selling and I've actually I've actually not accounted for the real estate in here. And so you get to add on to this what we call redundant assets. These are assets that are not employed in the business, okay? Um, and the real estate, when you sell it to me, will not be employed in the business because I'll actually be leasing it to you, uh, leasing it from you. And so I've assumed that the net equity Okay, so that's the value of the real estate less the debt here is 0.9 is $900,000. Three plus 0 0.9 is 3.9, 2.6 is times point, uh, plus 0.9 is uh, 3.5. So now we have a range of 3.5 to $3.9 million. And that is the value of the equity, the shares of your business. What, what the valuers would call on block, which means all the shares of your business. Midpoint here is $3.7 million. Uh, and that's the equity valuation, as I said. Okay, so a lot to cram into, more like 10 minutes, but uh, hopefully that gives you the basics of how an EBITDA valuation uh, works. Don't forget your redundant assets. Don't forget to deduct your debt. Everybody does. Don't forget to normalize and have a look at the trends so that you pick a reasonable, you know, maintainable EBITDA. And your multiple, if your multiples are uh, less than three or greater than seven or eight, then something weird's going on, okay? Uh, but there is a, uh, there's a reasonable multiple range, I think, for this business. That's it, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know, throw them in the notes, email me, whatever you wanna do. This has been a quick shot on the Martinez with Scott channel. Thank you.